And when I watched the clip from Mike Harris when he was on with Project Camelot, it blew me away. Uh, and, and sir, I definitely want to know your opinion on it because, you know, you were doing the interview with her and uh, she didn't even ask you a question. And you said, hey, can I give you my my best crazy wild ass guess? You know, this this plane <laughs> with an interdimensional portal. And you're, you're not even smiling. You're just saying it straight up like it doesn't seem like you were joking. And I thought that I went, wow, what, what does this guy know? Because you had just the whole interview was about freescale semiconductors and they had been identified as the motive for stealing this aircraft or for using it as a show of force, as Joseph P. Farrell had speculated uh, for our adversaries so that our adversaries would know like, hey, we've got some crazy technology out there. And that's a good way to show it to your adversaries where the public would have no idea because even if China or Russia were to say that we warped the plane away, no one's going to believe them and all the mainstream media will just say it's Russian disinformation or what have you. So, you know, I guess the, the, the million dollar question on everybody's mind is, you know, why did you make that statement and, and were you joking or were you, you know, was that coming from a place of knowledge? It was coming from an educated guess. You know, uh, we, we all have some things that we know pieces of. And sometimes you have to, you have uh, two data points and you have to draw a line between them. Well, I've got multiple data points and that was the line that I drew between them. And for anybody who has not seen the entire clip, essentially what I stated is that um, the plane went through some sort of a portal. And there's a lot of things that back that up. Mike Harris, Ashton Forbes, thank you so much for finding time. I can't, I cannot describe with with words, you know, how excited and looking forward to this conversation. Um, now, um, I must say, I don't know whether it's coincidence or not, but you know, I've been following Ashton Forbes like for some quite some time, not so long, but like you know, a few months, you know. And then uh, all of a sudden, um, I I found this tweet, which um, um, first of all. Uh, before I go into all kinds of, you know, rabbit holes, uh, welcome to the show, Mike and Ashton. Why don't you just start off? Uh, maybe I'll start off with Ashton. Um, I don't know. Do you want to like uh, give yourself a short, you know, introduction to yourself, like you know, as a citizen journalist, investigative journalist? Yeah. So you know, I tell people my background is how I was been in healthcare IT. Uh, I consider myself a database architect. I worked with databases my whole career. I can write SQL stuff like that. Work with uh, hospitals to help uh, take their processes and integrate them into the software systems. Uh, but over the last nine months, I've become a citizen journalist investigating the missing airliner MH370, Malaysian Airlines Flight 370. Uh, started this organization, a uh, volunteer organization called MH370X, where we've been looking into these videos that have reemerged on social media that have been around for 10 years. And um, it's led us down, like you said, rabbit holes that I didn't think could even possibly exist. Um, and I do, do, it does make me wonder uh, about like uh, higher concepts like divine purpose in general, because I think it's not until 2023, 2024 that we could even begin to understand uh, from the public perspective, some of the science that we see in those videos. And uh, that's why I'm hoping to uh, chat here today about uh, you know the investigation and the technology that might be out there that the public isn't really aware of just to bring awareness to it. Awesome. I mean, my, my listeners follow us, you know, know you, Mike, but uh, why don't you still, you know, because you have a fascinating background <laughs> with the technology oh. of life physics. So go ahead. Welcome to the show, Mike. Well, well, Kayvon, thank you for inviting me. It's always a, a pleasure to uh, to be a guest on your show. And I really welcome opportunities to address people and to try to bring awareness to them about uh, things that they may not encounter in, in their daily life. But uh, do you want background out of me? Where do I come from? What do I do? Um, what I have can I summarize done, it. I, I mean, I'm, yeah, but go ahead. <laughs> Okay, well, you know, I, I, I spent most of my adult career in the, uh, the semiconductor space. I uh, spent a lot of it being um, an obedient servant to uh, Motorola, uh, particularly their semiconductor group, which as we get into the uh, MH370 discussion, uh, that, that will become germane. Uh, and and I'll, I'll fill in on that. But, um, you know, I've traveled the world extensively and um, 
know, probably 110 trips to Asia, probably another 40 or 50 to Europe in the former Soviet Union, another eight or 10 to the Middle East, East and North Africa, but uh, pretty well traveled and uh, seen a lot of places, done a lot of things with a lot of different people and um, is, have served as a uh, finance chairman for the Republican Party. I uh, was a candidate for governor of Arizona in 2006. Um, you know, uh, boy, just uh, was, was a financial editor for Veterans Today. So just uh, just done a bunch of things. I've worn a, a multitude of hats in this uh, this lifetime of mine. So like I said, it's hard to, to uh, summarize it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, uh, we, we I think we got to know each other, uh, Mike. Uh, I don't know ages. <laughs> like, was it like 10 or 15 years ago at, uh, uh, you know, in, in the context of the um, for transparency, uh, you know, sake is um, in the context of the teachings and conferences of, um, you know, the nuclear engineer from formerly from Iran, originally from Iran, Mehran Tabakulikesh, who, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm convinced he uh, developed and built the, um, the gravity, the principle of gravity. And with that, the, I mean, it, I know it goes above, you know, the average head, but building the defense technology based or rooted in magnetic or gravitational field strength. And that's, I mean, I learned a lot because I preoccupied myself with these teachings, with these conferences. Um, personally, also with Mehran uh, for many, many years. So I learned a lot, uh, whether I agree, you know, with their whatever organizational whatever background, it doesn't matter, but uh, it all comes together now. And um, the, the funny thing is now, uh, uh, since uh, Ashton, uh, I think it's important to know that um, um, because you, you, you tweeted, I think in, it was, uh, let, me, let me just pull this up. Um, Because I've been following you, and you, um, I think it was on December, yeah, this, uh, yeah, December 2023 was, I think, two yeah, posts, was... yeah, you did on, and um, there, in the context of an interview uh, with Mike Harris and, uh, what's her name, uh, Project Camelo, um, oh, yes, yeah, and so, I, and, and I was, I was thinking like, and somebody was writing in the comments, why don't you guys, you know, get together and, and, and Ashton says, yeah, I'm definitely going to, uh, you know, do something about it. And I'm like, Hey, I know Mike, you know, why not connect the two of you? And now I'm going to shut up because I want you, I want our listeners, you know, viewers and, and followers, you know, to really go deep into the different rabbit holes. But, um, and I think there's a lot of terminology that uh, just goes above the average person's head because, you know, especially people who don't have the time or resources, you know, to go into really uh, investigative, you know, research and reading and studying, uh, you know, would it be interdimensional portals, wormholes, microscopic phase conjugation? I mean, it's a lot of terminology. And I think we have to set some records straight. And, uh, but Ashton, why didn't you just, you know, kick it off? Um, what, what, what made you, first of all, what I want to know is what, what made you so excited or because I, you know, I've been watching yeah. some kind of documentary on Netflix and in ex post, you know, like afterwards, I'm like, I should have never liked watched this because there's so much gaslighting going on. I should have gone straight yeah. to your, you know, investigative research. And, uh, and if, I mean, it's, I would even call it like forensic, uh, uh, dissection, you know, of every argument, data, uh, uh, yeah, every every expertise you you can get your hands on. Uh, so, yeah, thank you again, you know, for both of you, you know, taking your time and uh, for your expertise. Um, but yeah, Ashton, why don't you go ahead and um, just ask Mike your questions, uh, which I'm sure you know <laughs> you have already uh, lined up. Yeah, well, so this clip right here that you've got uh, on this post is one that was pointed out to me uh, back in November, I think. And why this stuck out to me was that we, I've determined personally that the MH370 videos are authentic and potentially the biggest leak of military intelligence in the history of the world. Um, and after digging through the science, understanding the science, talking to engineers such as Salvatore Paez and uh, some additional engineers as well, either ones connected to the government by contracts or through um, low energy nuclear reactions, that what we're seeing in those videos is either some type of macroscopic phase conjugation uh, or uh, actual real wormhole. Uh, and 
that these concepts are consistent with the laws of physics as we understand them, but that the black projects and special access programs in the United States and elsewhere uh, potentially have been hiding this type of understanding of physics from the world. Um, and so there's really two, two possibilities in my mind in terms of what's going on here. One is that it's like a, an actual real wormhole, and we're looking at the mouth of a wormhole, and we're watching this plane disappear through it. Or it's a situation equivalent to the double slit experiment where the wave function is being rebuilt. And this plane is going from a massive object to essentially a wave function of energy and then converting back to a massive object again. And when I watched the clip from Mike Harris when he was on with Project Camelot, it blew me away. Uh, and, and sir, I definitely want to know your opinion on it because, you know, you were doing the interview with her and... Uh, she didn't even ask you a question and you said, Hey, can I give you my, my best crazy wild ass guess? You know, this, this plane <laughs> went through an interdimensional portal and you're, you're not even smiling. You're just saying it straight up. Like it doesn't seem like you were joking. And I thought that and I went, wow, what, what does this guy know? Because you had just, the whole interview was about free scale semiconductors and they had been identified as the motive for stealing this aircraft or for using it as a show of force, as Joseph P. Farrell had speculated, uh, for our adversaries so that our adversaries would know, like, hey, we've got some crazy technology out there. And that's a good way to show it to your adversaries where the public would have no idea, because even if China or Russia were to say that we warped the plane away, no one's going to believe them. And all the mainstream media will just say it's Russian disinformation or what have you. So, you know, I guess the, the, the million dollar question on everybody's mind is, you know, why did you make that statement? And, and were you joking or were you, you know, was that coming from a place of knowledge? It was coming from an educated guess. You know, uh, we, we all have some things that we know pieces of. And sometimes you have to, you have uh, two data points and you have to draw a line between them. Well, I've got multiple data points, and that was the line that I drew between them. And for anybody who has not seen the entire clip, essentially what I stated is that um, the plane went through some sort of a portal. And there's a lot of things that back that up. And do we want to do background on Freescale, or do we want to skip that part and just stay focused on, on this issue? It's, I'll leave it up to you guys, because I'm... Um, I would... Uh, yeah, I mean, if you want to disclose that, I mean, you, you told me a background story about... You know, 1999, 2000, the bid, uh, maybe yes. it's important. Yeah, the backgrounds of Freescale and the, yeah. Motorola uh, was coming apart as a company. They went from uh, being probably one of the top uh, Fortune 50 companies in the US and they're, they're virtually non existent now. They were, uh, uh, I, I spoke with members of the founding family as to what happened because um, I, I didn't understand because. In 1998, Motorola was the world's largest producer of semiconductors by both dollar volume and unit volume. So they produced more semiconductors of, of each, you know, and then they made more money from producing those semiconductors than anybody else on the planet. Uh, number two was uh, Hitachi. And um, how that company went from that position to having no position in that space now is is a, another amazing story. And what I've learned from that is that uh, China used, uh, and uh, let me go back further. When Motorola built their first factory in China, I was, you know, I was, I had a, a very minor role in that. And I argued with uh, the guy who was the chairman and CEO at the time, said, do not build it in China. Do not build anything in China. Uh, number one, in two years, they will have stolen all your technology. And in, in 10 years, they will own the factory. Well, they own the factory now. And so, uh, you know, I, I, was, I was right on that. And he disregarded it because China had promised to open up the market. China saw Motorola as the world's premium telecommunications company in the world. And they were. And so China wanted to have that technology and everything that went with it. So what I have determined they did, because I, I, I submitted two bids into Motorola to buy different various assets from them. Uh, the first one was a $1.6 billion offer to buy um, their semiconductor components group. And we outbid our competitor by $300 million, yet we lost the bid. Uh, they sold it to the other guys. And so what had happened is um, China, using American cutouts, um, 
you know, investment uh, banking firms, private equity firms, um, you know, things along those lines had bought up positions on their board. And um, you look at what Motorola stock did in 96, 97, and then they lost control in 98. Uh, their stock went from a, a stable $50, $55 a share, went up to over $180 a share within an 18 month period of time with no apparent reason. There was no new technology. There was nothing uh, say, why is the stock going up? Why is the stock going up? So what, what they had done is they acquired various blocks using cutouts. And uh, when the, the time came to vote, they voted uh, control of the company away from the found, founding family. Well, I spoke to members of the founding family and they didn't quite understand what happened either, but that's what, what we surmised together that, uh, that had happened. So they lost control of the company and then they were being forced to break it up to, to quote, maximize value if you're shareholder value. And um, that's when the company started to come apart where they're selling off pieces of it. Uh, the, the first piece was Semiconductor Components Group, which went on to become a company called On Semiconductor. And then there's the other piece, which got, went on to become uh, Freescale Semiconductor. Well, most people don't know this because it didn't make the, the Wall Street Journal, but I tendered a, a $10 billion all cash offer to buy that, uh, that, that, that organization from Motorola and was again, uh, rebuffed and, and refused because uh, the, the, the board of directors, uh, which were, in my opinion, this is only an opinion, conjecture, of course, and I don't want to get sued, um, came out and said, no, we're, we, we've got our uh, selected buyer already already gone. We're, we're not going to take, we're not going to entertain a better offer because we've already have a, a home for it where we want it to go. And so that's that's really what, what happened there. So I was sort of out in the cold, even though I had done all the, the work to get it done and would have been a better deal and like I said, I understood that business as well as anybody on the planet at that time. So uh, that, that's that's the backstory. Now, when we come to Freescale as it is today, and, or not today, but as it was back when um, th uh, Flight 370 disappeared, they allegedly had a uh, design team on that um, on that air aircraft, and they had the entire design team on that aircraft. And when the aircraft disappeared. All of the know-how as to the, the technology they had developed and had re recently patented also disappeared, disappeared with them. Um, the only copies that were left were, were what's in the patent office and recorded, but the guys who knew how to build it, how to do it, who innovated it, were all gone. Now, going back to Motorola days, I know what their standard operating procedure was, and they would never have allowed a design team like that to travel on the same aircraft ever. Yeah. Um, they have very strict policies about, you know, what level of personnel and how many of them can be on any particular aircraft just for reasons like this. So the whole thing stinks of a setup. And then the fact that the, the airplane disappeared and they haven't found any traces of it that, that have been significant yet. I mean, what would they find? A couple of bags of peanuts floating in the ocean someplace. And so they must have come from, uh, from flights 370. None of the, uh, they've got locators on these aircraft that you can find them, you know, anywhere in the world. And in fact, um, depending on what engine type they have in there, if, if it's a Rolls Royce engine, they can monitor that engine real time from Rolls Royce headquarters, <laughs> wherever their engine control, they can do this. They, they, they know how it's functioning. They know what it's doing. They've got that level of control and they've got that level of integration on this. And none of these things mattered. None of them, the, the aircraft literally, not figured, literally just disappeared into thin air. Can and I ask you, just, just one short question, Mike, or Ashton, both of you. I mean, how is it possible? Usually, I mean, that's the ordinary company policy. You don't put like all kinds of yeah. personnel. On, I mean, you, you, you talked about a setup. What do you mean? I mean, how is that possible? Yeah, let me jump in here too, because yeah. so yeah, as part of the investigation, of course, we, we found these details as well. Um, we found that, you know, 20 Freescale Semiconductor employees, eight of them are Chinese nationals, 12 are Malaysian nationals. That's way too many people from one company on board the same plane. My company has a policy where it's like two or three people. And I, I, we don't mm -hmm. have a whole design team like that either. You know, that would be like major red flags. We actually found where they were sitting on the plane and they're all sitting next to each other as well, which indicates that the tickets must have been booked together. Like these companies have travel agencies that they would use as well. 
which really raises red flags because there's no way that like you could maybe plausibly argue, well, everybody booked their tickets separately and they just all happen to be on the same plane, but they wouldn't all be sitting like right next to each other. Some of them had their families with them too. Is very bizarre. Nothing really adds up. And then real quick on what uh, Mike was just saying, like stinks of a setup, the Rolls Royce engines, the excuse was, oh, well, Malaysia didn't pay for the, the service. But does that mean that they're not transmitting the data? You know, like they're still transmitting the data. They're just not getting the service from it. And then the ELTs, there's four redundant emergency transponders that only go off during a crash. There's no way to disable them. None of them set off any signals. Like, and just for Mike, just for more information, just to add on there, the radars, we found that the military has over the horizon radars, which can see for thousands of miles. Diego Garcia, Pine Gap would have both seen this plane from takeoff to landing. And uh, the Jorn uh, Jindali Operational Radar Network would have potentially seen it as well. We found from the Royal Aeronautical Society presentation in 2019, I posted this a couple days ago, there was five radars that should have tracked the plane in the Nicobar Islands right after they claimed that it, they lost radar contact with it. Um, and we found the SOSA system. There was a scientific paper just published a few weeks ago uh, that shows the hydrophones at Diego Garcia and off the coast of Western Australia both should have easily heard the plane crash, even if it was a low energy crash into the ocean. There's no acoustic detections consistent with it going into the ocean. So it's like you just look at this evidence and you go, wait, this plane didn't crash. There must be something else. But then my follow up is, but why a portal, right? Because when you talk about the semiconductor company, one thing that I've determined from talking to government engineers about this is there's two technolo technologies that allow for like anti gravitational effects, space time manipulation. One of them is plasma physics. And the other mm -hmm. one is semiconductors, which I don't think the world really realizes how powerful superconductivity is and, se and powerful semiconductors. Is that how you came up with this idea of a portal or was it more of just there was no plane found, so it must have, you know, done something anomalous? Well, how do you make um, something that large disappear? How, how does it just disappear lock, stock and barrel? I mean, there was no floating debris. Like you said, there was no collision uh, with the ocean surface. There was no uh, sonograph of that. There, there, there's nothing. And so how does something, I mean, you know, uh, a seven, uh, was that 777, I think it was, uh, how do they just disappear? That, that, that's got to weigh a quarter million pounds. It's got to be 250,000 pounds or more. And, but, and no debris, no, no, no floating debris, no sunken debris. I mean, there's no oil slick on the, on the ocean. I mean, uh, you look at how much fuel this thing carries. I mean, how much uh, Carol Jet fuel uh, that that would spread out over several hundred, if not thousand miles. It, it would uh, form a surface film. Nothing, nothing. And so it, it just, uh, like I said, it it just uh, um, a mystery we haven't solved yet. So uh, you know that, that that is, like I said earlier, that is my speculation that it disappeared into a portal, because like it or not, uh, I'm of the opinion. As Kayvon hinted earlier, our, our, our buddy Cash here, I am highly confident that, that portals are real. We just have not mastered them yet. So, yeah. um, so along the lines of the semiconductor company, I think the other thing that's really weird is how a lot of these semiconductor companies were being offered huge amounts of money, potentially over their value, or, you know, and things like that, and they're just turning it all down, which implicates to me that they have some value that's not on the books that they are not telling people about. And the reason why I thought that's important is that, you know, if these semiconductors are able to produce technologies that would be otherworldly or magical to the public, or that they can produce, like I called Freescale, Freescale superconductors. Like they had superconductive microchips, but their name is just a misnomer. And superconductive uh, microchips are used in advanced computing uh, AI, uh, and, uh, quantum computers. We found that we found a 2005 national security agency report that talked about the commercial emergence of superconductive microchips and freescale semiconductors was listed in it nine times. And mm -hmm. it says that if it would only become to fruition, if the government were to invest money in it and that it would be a good investment and that it would come to fruition by 2010 or 2012. And I just look at that and I go, well, I mean, there's my connection from this company directly to the US, U.S. government. They had also, in 2013, just signed a contract with U.S. Aerospace and Defense to serve RF power needs or radio frequency power needs. 
And when you look at some of how this type of like warping technology, wormhole technology works, it comes down to phase conjugation, which is using radio frequencies and radio waves and having them, as my buddy Dave Rossi would say, make love, kind of cancel each other out, which leaves over this scalar potential, which is gravity manipulation. Um, so what are your thoughts on like, um, do you think that freescale semiconductors had technology that was kind of either not on the books or not understood by the public? that was more advanced than what people would have uh, you know, thought? Well, I can only go back to what I have working knowledge of. And as of 1998, my working knowledge, I was very familiar with, with most of Motorola's advanced research projects and their dedicated labs that they had in various facilities to carry out their research. Um, superconducting was one of the holy grails um, that was, was pursued because Everybody wants to go faster data processing, but the spinoffs you get from faster data processing, you get other unanticipated benefits or, or un other unanticipated side effects, if you will. And so if I had to speculate on this, I would say yes. And well, I, I've attended various superconductor conferences and, and learned as much as I can and, and the problems with, with temperature and problems with, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, ceramic materials, all these different things, but doesn't mean there, there's not a, a, a breakthrough waiting around the corner. Did I know everything they were working on? Heavens no, I didn't have that sort of clearance. But uh, there, I, I had a, a pretty good insight into a lot of things, and superconducting was a field they were actively researching. So, but my, my knowledge of that stopped in 1998, what they did between then going forward after uh, Freescale um, went their way. I I, I can't uh, guess on, and uh, so I, I I'm I'm um, out of my depth on that one. Well, that's really enlightening, honestly. Like this has already been a really interesting interview because uh, the fact that they were even looking into super con superconductivity, I think, is huge. I, I think the public really doesn't understand how big superconductivity is with respect to some of these effects. Um, there's a lot of research that I've dug into scientific papers that show that. Um, superconductivity is potentially the missing link to macroscopic, uh, macroscopically observable quantum effects. And when you look at, but let, let me give a real quick example about superconductivity. Uh, Everybody is aware of the maglev trains. You know, I mean, we've all seen representations of those. That's one example. Now, imagine if you can take the generator set that's inside of a General Electric Frame Seven uh, turbine generator. And if you don't need the turbine uh, engine to propel it because it's, it's gravity free, it's weightless, you know, superconducting materials, and all you need is a Briggs and Stratton five horsepower lawnmower to turn it, imagine the, the cost savings that you're going to have not having to, to feed and fuel that thing. These are just primitive examples of, of what the, the, the low hanging fruit is, the, the easy stuff to see. But if we really had, um, semi uh, superconducting materials and we really have anti-gravity capabilities um the world changes you know the world of humanity changes and i'll go back to trump's uh, inauguration speech when he talks about repressed technologies that are going to be brought forward uh, to and made available for commercial development and yet he was never allowed to bring those forward he talked about uh in in, in these these areas we're talking about energy production physics and medical and uh, none of these things that, that Trump had mentioned and that he was going to bring forth, he was ever allowed to do because uh, people were, were blocking and tackling and trying to, to keep him so busy he couldn't do the job he went there to do. Yeah, and I think, do I remember? Yeah, okay, I, I found it on my Twitter as well. Where So first of all, the Trump thing is very interesting because Salvatore Paez, who is a Navy engineer, he released his patents, got a published between 2018 and 2020 under Trump. And I have it from my sources that this was like a loophole that they, they didn't want this to happen, but it ended up happening. And his patents have to do with high temperature superconductivity being induced by piezoelectric materials. And that it doesn't even take metamaterials to pull off superconductivity, uh, that plasma physics can do it. And then he also has this inertial mass reduction for a trans uh, device for or craft for trans medium travel. And then he also has a high frequency gravitational wave generator. And I've now found another paper by Bob Baker, who is another legendary DOD or 
government engineer, let's say, I don't know his exact role. Um, so I think that that technology is potentially definitely like getting out there. But to your point, what I've learned from presidents is that there's a lot of presidents that wanted to come in and especially like reveal UFOs and aliens. And the moment they get in, it's almost like they got a phone call. We're like, nah, sorry, it ain't going to happen. And it leads my mind, not to aliens, but it leads to the technology because that's the stuff where it's like national defense. Like you can't release this information because this is an arms race between China, Russia and the United States for whoever has the best, the most developed versions of this. And one other thing real quick, I found a post. This is uh, dated uh, January 19th. I think that uh, we had just had this one up a second ago, but it looked like it was from because we dug around and we, we were looking for you, Mike, and, and all the stuff you've ever posted on your YouTube channel. And it was literally about quantum. Uh, I, I don't know if it was quantum teleportation, but quantum physics in general. Um, and I gotten big on this idea of ER equals EPR, which is this idea that an Einstein Rosen bridge, a wormhole, is fundamentally equivalent to quantum entanglement. Uh, Einstein Rosen Poldowski. Uh, and so, yeah, I had found this video here about uh, quantum internet and quantum particles. And I, we think we, oh, sorry, I think we found it on your uh, YouTube channel. Oh, yeah, yeah. Research has achieved lo sustained long distance quantum teleportation. And so when I saw this, I knew you were a guy that like understands the implications of quantum mechanics, especially with respect to the technology. <laughs> well, you know, it, it would be nice to be able to live really in a, in a Star Trek world. And um, but some powers that be don't seem to want to get us there. I'm going to get I want to read you a quote from a guy named uh, Ben Rich, who was the second oh, yeah. director of Lockheed Skunk Works. It's a, it's a pretty famous quote. Everybody's heard it. But uh, we already have the means to travel among the stars. But those technologies are locked up in black projects. It would take an act of God to ever get them out to benefit humanity. Anything you can imagine, we already know how to do. And he said that back in uh, 1993 at an alumni speech at UCLA. And so um, you, you go back and you look at where, how did we get here? You, you go back to Reagan's uh, Strategic Defense Initiative, also called the Star Wars Project. They spent nearly a trillion dollars uh, in R&D that was all black project stuff, and none of it ever came out. And then when George H.W. Bush took over, when Reagan had served his two terms, it all went from, from, from black projects to not existing. I mean, it, it, just, it just went off the map. It went uh, totally silent. And so, you know, we, we, we've paid for this technology. We've paid for these developments. We, we sense that they're out there. We, we sort of know that they're out there, but they've been um, sequestered and, and, and held off and, and not here to benefit the people who, who bought and paid for all the research that we've done. And I'll, I'll give you another example, because we're not the only ones doing this kind of stuff. If you, um, you look at what the Russians have been up to, and they've been up to this for a long time. There was an incident on a, a ship in the Black Sea called the USS Donald Cook. On veterans today, know. was that an article? Did you write them? Sorry, it was was it on veterans? Did you write it with, with somebody else? Like uh, it was a pretty good investigative article in veterans today, like it, many many years ago. It, it may have been somebody else who wrote about. It, but okay. what, what they did is uh, two uh, two Russian MiGs flew over, and the USS Donald Cook, which which is an Aegis class destroyer, which is supposed to be that the state of the art, um, you know, four C uh, full spectrum dominance on on every spectrum. And the thing just shut down and it was sitting inert floating around out there for somewhere you know, eight, 10 hours out there. And then the Russians flew by again and turned it back on. You know, what I have learned is that they, they have the technology now to stop the flow of electrons in electronic devices um, without destroying the device. Now, you can do the same thing with an EMP, but it'll destroy the device. It'll never work again. But the Russians have the technology now to stop uh, the flow of electrons temporarily while it's in the field. And then when it's out of the field, the device works like normal again. And so, so the, these are things that are out there that exist and that we're, we're being deceived. We're, we're, this technology, is we're not being allowed to know about it. But uh, inquiring minds want to know, so we, we keep poking. Why you do know? you think that they're hiding it? What would your yeah. opinion be of that? Uh, why, why the Russians were? No, they, they I don't. mean, why we're hiding it? Why is everybody hiding it? I mean, I think Russia has it. Oh, I think China no. knows, but why are they hiding it from the public? Um, 
they want to control the expansion outward into space. They don't want uh, the riffraff uh, of, of the rest of humanity to know that they, they want to select and choose and people who meet the, the right, um, you know, uh, you, are, you, are you smart enough? Are you athletic enough? Do you have the right political views? Do you, uh, are, are, are you the right type of person that they want to allow to propagate out into the, uh, the wild? Or are you just going to be, um, you know, like the rest of humanity out here, which uh, many of the, uh, the elites view as, 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 a, as a disease upon the planet. And so, uh, you know, how, what, what is your view of humankind? And uh, I, I think they want to keep the people who uh, are, are aligned with their viewpoints um, and keep the rest of us out. Mm -hmm. Um, Ash and Mike, um, there's an essential aspect to this. I think we need st to structurally discuss this. I mean, there's no way around it. But but I, I want to just compliment or uh, add uh, another um, incident, as you know, you know, from Mehran Kesh, uh, the capturing of the so-called you know high-tech drones of the United States. Um, mm -hmm. Always, you know, on the whatever anniversary of the regime, they did it like intentionally on that day always, and. I mean, still, there's no official version of it, but how did they capture it without, first of all, no scratch and with, with, by, by deactivating the self-detonation uh, mechanism of the drone? And they brought it down and made a sort of a updated or even better version of that, of that drone. And they did that several times. So this is what I'm saying, defense technology on whatever you want to call it, uh, plasma, spaceship technology, plasma technology, magnetic gravitational field strength, right? So this is it all, you know, I think there are different approaches to understanding, comprehending, you know, the holistic science, technology and implementation of this technology. And, and I think, Ashton, you were the one to, I think, recently posted, was it a comment or some kind of whistleblower insider uh, text of how these uh, shell companies have created compartmentalization, national security, how they can, you know, highest officials call there and say, no need to know, no comment. I mean, this has been going on not for years, but for so many decades. We're not talking about a couple of trillions. We're talking about tens and tens of trillions. Just listen to the talks of Catherine Austin Fitz, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what's your comment on that? I mean, how would you, I mean, who, if it's, in, it's not only unconstitutional, it's fucking illegal. So if it's legal, as Stephen Greer, by the way, said, and by the way, Mike, it might be good information for you. I brought uh, Stephen Greer together with the team of Mayor and Cash, but unfortunately, I mean, I got to say that for the sake of transparency, they thought he's CIA, by the way. I'm not saying this, but... They, they, they saw who, who was CIA? Which one? Dr. Greer Stephen or Cash? Greer Kesh? might be sort of CIA affiliated, and I'm, 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 I was thinking, no, maybe he might be instrumentalized, you know, as, um, you know, to, 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 you know, to nurture the narrative. You know, about because I know, Ashton, from your comments that you don't agree either, you know, with his whatever alien stuff and whatever his 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 point of view, sort of, you know, I'm just saying, you know. Well, so the uh, the RQ-170 incident is, is a big, interesting one, because like you said, Iran supposedly hacked this drone. Like, how did they bring it down without it crashing? And the United States, you know, sent in their disinformation apparatus and, and propaganda and said that, oh, no, no, it didn't happen, blah, blah, blah. And they've actually made their own versions of the drone uh, based on, on that one. It's, it's all pretty public information regarding that. And I think it does show that even uh, states like Iran can be capable uh, of this type of stuff. I mean, their president just got shot down in a, in a helicopter a few weeks ago or like a week ago. Uh, which is a little bit suspicious because they just shot a bunch of rockets as Israel a few weeks before that. And like there were like three governors on board that helicopter at the same time. Uh, but I think that going back to the technology, the reason why that's important is that it shows this technology is so dangerous, so capable uh, that, you know, this would be a reason why, in my opinion, they would want to hide it is that we don't want our adversaries to have doomsday level technology, which I think is what this type of stuff re represents. You know, you can teleport an airplane, but you can also then, uh, as my buddy would say, turn that sideways. And now you've got like a rail gun or you've got a weapon of extreme mass destruction that can render nukes essentially obsolete. Uh, and this then, because of its extreme power, even small nation states that were able to utilize this technology become a major threat to the whole world. Um, to your point about the money and, and the post I made, absolutely, I believe that post is accurate. 
uh, they use shell companies to move the money around, and they're, this gets rid of the paper trail if anyone were to look into it. This is also the reason why they use uh, third-party defense contractors, because they're shielded from FOIA requests. All this stuff about UAP disclosure in Congress is going to, I'm just going to spoil it for everyone, it's going to yield absolutely nothing. Because the government officially doesn't have anything to hide. All the stuff is hidden in the defense contractors, which are protected from any types of inquiries. And, and also, in some cases, they're legally allowed to lie about it as well, because these people are simply above the law. So not to damn put a rain in your parade, people would argue it's illegal, but they're literally just above the law. That's the, the level we're dealing with here. They're never going to face consequences. Even if we stole the airplane, MH370, even if we teleported it away, no one's going to face any real consequences for it. That's just the way let, the world works. Let me, right let me give you a, a data point here that might be useful. Under the regime of George H.W. Bush, uh, the U.S. did something they'd never, ever done before. And that is they started outsourcing their intelligence functions. So jobs that should have belonged within the CIA, the NSA, the DIA, other, uh, any of the 17 intelligence organizations that comprise the US government intelligence apparatus, they began outsourcing these and using third party contractors um, you know, to, to do the same work for the reasons you just said. There's no FOIA, there's no congressional oversight. There's none of these things. And then how do you pay them? Well, you look at the war in Afghanistan and uh, you look at how the uh, opium production grew from about 200 metric tons a year uh, total for all of Afghanistan to over 9,800 me metric tons a year. And you look at the amount of uh, revenue that generates uh, north of you know, a trillion plus dollars every year, that's a lot of money. And so that's how you fund these, uh, these third party contractors is, is through black, uh, black money like that from, from dealing drugs. And, and that's, that is where I suspect a lot of this money went on. And I also go back to 9-10-2001, um, the day before 9-11, when uh, Dick, um, what was his name, uh, Rumsfeld, Donald Rumsfeld came out and said, I had to confess that with the Pentagon, we're missing $2.3 trillion. We don't know where it went. And um, then the next day, uh, the, the Able Danger investigation team was assembled in that part of the Pentagon that was struck by the, uh, the, the cruise missile. <laughs> so, uh, you know, you, you look at these things and, and there are no coincidences. It's, uh, you know, they're, they're, there's things that they can try to make you believe are coincidences, but they're not. And, you know, they're, they're, the, the bottom line is they're flat out lying to the American people and the people of the world. They've taken us into to two wars that were unjustified. And, you know, the, the Taliban had nothing to do with 9-11. Saddam Hussein had nothing to do with 9-11. Nothing. And yet we went over there and, and we, we spent about $8 trillion destroying two countries and killing millions of people. All in the, the, this name of this elusive war on terror, which, you know, there, there was no war on terror because there was no terror. It, it, it was a war of aggression to for, for other means. And so... Um, you know, that's, we're, we're, we're living in, in, in sort of a, a, a really bad world where the, the bad guys have got a, a really good hand. They, they're, they're well organized, they've got a lot of money, and they've got technology that we don't have access to. And we have none of those things. We just outnumber them millions to one. And so, uh, you know, that's, that's the only advantage we have is our sheer numbers. And so um, we're, 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 we're sort of in, in, a, in a pinch here. We're, we're in, a, in a bad situation because they've put us in a bad situation and humanity could be living an entirely different life. And now, right now I'm working with uh, Kayla Ross and I don't know if you know who she is or not, but uh, working with her trying to get uh, a, a, a treaty to, to prevent space from being weaponized. Uh, the US doesn't want to sign it. China and Russia have both agreed to sign it. 43 other countries want to sign it, but it doesn't, it allows for no weapons in outer space. The US wants to stick with just nuclear weapons in outer space. But uh, if you didn't, I mean, you don't need to have nuclear weapons out of space to, to screw things up up there. You could take, uh, you know, um, you know, directed energy weapons are, are one choice. But the other thing is, if you want to uh, destabilize space, it's pretty easy to do. And uh, it, it doesn't take much. All you have to do is take uh, 100 kilograms of, uh, you know, 10 millimeter steel, steel balls and, and you know, blast them across uh, into an orbit. And suddenly you've got a, a swarm of uh, objects out there that no spacecraft, no satellite's going to be able to survive. So you can uh, 
take all these things out. It, it, it's not hard. But uh, the United States does not want to sign that uh, treaty because, well, there, there's a, several different reasons. One of them is it, it could be the next big profit center for them to, um, to um, you know, develop weapons, uh, you know, to counter other weapons, which is a pointless arms race. It produces nothing. It's just uh, money down a black hole. Uh, or they have weapons and technologies that they don't want to be under uh, jurisdiction of any treaty, that they, they want to be able to do what they want, hold the high ground and uh, dictate what goes on on the surface of this planet. So do we lose Ashton or he just got us muted while he takes? Uh... Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, no, he's muted. But um, yeah, he I can't see him. Uh, but Mike, you know, the, the, the tragedy is that um, it's been you know ongoing for such a long time. And I mean, how many inventors, scientists, uh, engineers <laughs> have been, you know, suicided in this process you know i mean it's always connected always to the patent you know patent process you know the patent process and patent offices you know they always seek you know to gain a you know patent on on this and that technology but then you know i don't know they're either being bought or silenced or intimidated threatened or even you know eventually i don't know uh Killed. yeah you can yeah. say it i mean uh, uh, how many of these guys have had mysterious deaths i mean you know, we, we know that our physics is um, is not right. You know, it's it's um, we're, we're so, something's wrong uh, with with what we're being taught and how the world works. And we really have to go back to the concept of the ether and uh, re-examine things. That the ether was the accepted um, way of, of viewing physics in the universe for a very long time. It became uh, unpopular. What 1910, 1920. And uh, so they, they rewrought all the, all the laws. We have to go back and revisit uh, the work of Maxwell um, the, and, and study what, what, what he did. But you know, we're, we're, we're being misguided, intentionally misguided down dead end paths. And you know, the thing is, uh, you, you look at this Motorola cell phone, by the way, I'm still loyal to the brand. Um, but you know, this, this has got more computing power on it than, than was in the Apollo program. And I didn't say go to the moon because that's still under debate, but uh, but was in the, uh, the Apollo program. But yet you look at our energy technology and we're, we're still stuck on internal combustion engines. We're still stuck with this primitive uh, nuclear um, power plants, the, the way that they're I mean, all we're doing is heating water to make steam. I mean, it's not a really sophisticated uh, approach. And this has been stifled. Why hasn't our communication and our computing technology why does our energy technology lag our, our computing and communication technology so so severely because if you had energy technologies you're going to upset the whole paradigm of uh, you know the fossil fuels the uh the, you know, the carbon based you know all the stuff that we we do to generate electricity now and we're being again misguided with this green new deal which it which is bunk i mean if you look at you know, solar panels and, and windmills, and I researched this very thoroughly. I was, I, I tried to get a project going to uh, um, build a, a solar, um, a thin film on glass uh, solar panel technology in, in Oregon. And uh, they, they wouldn't, they wouldn't fund it for me uh, because it wasn't in China. But all we're doing with the, the windmill technology and the, the solar panel technology is we're, we're not doing anything green. All we're doing is creating a landfill technology because those car, carbon composite blades on the solar, uh, on, on the windmills, you can put them in a landfill, but they don't degrade. They're gonna, you dig them up in 10,000 years, they're still the same uh, blade that you put in there day one. The same thing with the solar panels. They, they, they do not biodegrade. There's nothing, there's no way to get rid of this stuff. And uh, so all you're doing is burying it. That's the only thing you're doing. And, you know, they, they want to keep us away from any new uh, zero point energy fusion technologies, any of these other technologies where, where you know, the, the, like I said earlier, the anti-gravity thing, if you could run a, a GE frame seven um, turbine off of a, a five horsepower Briggs and uh, Stratton because it, it weighs nothing, it takes nothing to spin it. Uh, you know, imagine how, how many light years ahead, how cheap energy would be for every consumer out there. It, uh, it, it destroys the entire economic foundation of the society we live in. And I am in favor of destroying that foundation so we can evolve into going to something better. 
we, we need to have these things. We need to have access to the anti-gravity technologies, to the, the energy technologies. We, we, we need these things now. So, yeah, it, I want to just time. add on as well, Mike, because uh, you're blowing me away. I couldn't agree with you anymore. This has been an impressive conversation because I believe that Maxwell's equations were incorrectly reduced by Heaviside, and that's why we can, do everything, we can do everything that we're doing right now, but we've missed out on, on the magic, the gravity manipulation, the zero-point energy capabilities that are out there. I think that throwing away the ether was also a bad idea, in my opinion. I think that if you bring back the idea of the space-time ether with uh, unlimited negative energy in it, you can explain dark matter, you can explain dark energy, you can have a zero point energy device that can extract energy from the environment unlimited amounts and have a device that can be a generator that doesn't require any fuel input. And mm -hmm. that will change potentially everything that's out there. Um, and that's something that I want to do too, is that I, I you know, I actually am on the record now saying several times that I'm, I'm, I'm trying to talk with people to figure out because I know this can be engineered um, and that it can obsolete, like basically a lot of the forms of energy that we have out there. Now, it's not going to be a thing that overnight, everything else is just going to go away because that's not how economics works. But over time, they can become, those systems become more and more efficient, cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. And, you know, it, it's kind of like electric cars potentially starting to replace uh, gas powered cars. And I totally agree with you on the uh, wind and solar power stuff. It's a, the whole climate change stuff is a huge scam. We could end the problem tomorrow exactly. if we really cared. Yep. And this idea that solar and wind have, you know, no negative externalities is a complete joke. You know, wind power, they have these images of these wind power plants blowing up and spewing like chemical smoke into the air. And like, how do you deal with it when it's, you know, that's uh, life depreciated? Uh, same with the, the, the solar panels. Like now these things become trash and waste uh mm -hmm. and then you know and this is the part that people just ignore from that perspective but free energy devices over unity devices can replace all of that you know we can mm -hmm. replace all of our current systems of power so uh i 100 percent agree with everything you're talking about now one thing i want to go back to on this same front is that while i don't i don't say i disagree with dr greer necessarily when it comes to the alien stuff i just don't have evidence for it and when it comes to aliens i'm on the record saying i just don't really care like i care about yeah. the technology that will change our world and our planet and i think he is on point with respect to the whistleblowers he's he's spoken to uh many of the videos that i review related to the science and the engineers like dr greer is talking to them you know a lot of the people in the ufo community just want to talk to people that had telepathic experiences with aliens but dr greer has been talking to people that are like actually government engineers that know about some of the suppressed technology that's out there. One of them is Thomas Bearden. And I just wanted to ask if, if Mike, if you had heard of Thomas Bearden or any Oh, absolutely. Oh, okay. A absolutely. <laughs> he seems like a guy that Thomas like, Bearden. so that's funny you bring it up. Cause like, to me, he's a legend. I, I wish I would have been able to meet him. Uh, it's like one of the biggest uh, things that I regret in my life is that I didn't catch on to this before he passed away a couple of years ago. Cause to me, mm -hmm. I think he'll be a legendary, uh, scientist up there with the greats um and it's funny because when i bring his name up to people people that are in the know about it they're like oh of course i know thomas beer you know he's talking about <laughs> tesla and the ether and zero point energy and phase conjugation he literally explains the mh370 videos in 1985 he talks about a cold explosion and extraction of energy and i'm looking at the video going, wait He's talking about phase uh, uh, phase conjugation and, and pumping the energy out of location, and we're seeing it in a military video now in 2024 from 10, 10 years ago. It's just incredible. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on Thomas Bearden, uh, Mike? Uh, I think he made a good start, but there's still a long way to go to make this into a viable um, set of uh, energy generating uh, technologies, if you will. We're, we're not there yet. There needs to be more time and more money spent on this to, to do the research. And, and really, and maybe not, because here's what I don't know. Here, here's a piece of the puzzle that I don't have, and that is during the Reagan era, during the SDI, Strategic Defense Initiative, Star Wars, if you will, a trillion dollars was spent of taxpayer money. And we don't have any accounting for what was developed or what wasn't developed. And I would certainly like to do an audit on, on that, that expenditure, the, the, that money that was spent, and find out what was really developed, what worked, what didn't work, what was developed, what wasn't developed. Because they owe us that. You know, we as the taxpayers, it's our money. Uh, if, if they didn't use it for tax dollars, if they had to borrow the money, we're to pay the interest on it now. So uh, we're entitled to, to, to see this. 
and whoever these parties are who are suppressing and uh, sequestering this technology away from us need to be dealt with and dealt with firmly that uh, you, you just can't do this. I mean, uh, it, it's ethically not right. And if you have a good reason for it, start explaining why. Yeah, let me ask you this, Mike, because uh, so again, like I'm on the record, I want to bring that free energy, which is a bit, a bit of a misnomer. We're not talking about making free devices for everybody. We're talking about over unity devices that can extract energy from the ether, run perpetually a device that you can plug in, unplug, and it'll just keep producing energy for you. Uh, and there is a lot of materials costs and labor costs that goes into producing that that would go down over time. Um, a lot of people have different opinions about how to bring these types of devices to the world. Some people say open source it. Other mm -hmm. people say put it on the blockchain. Um, my view has been that I want to turn it into an industry. So commercialize it. And people get angry. Well, you're trying to make money off of it. Well, money makes the world go round in general. Uh, and I think that the only way, in my opinion, uh, is that you, somebody proves that it can work. Somebody does the Elon Musk thing like he did with Tesla and just starts producing electric cars. And then next thing you know, competitors show up. Everybody starts producing electric cars. That's kind of how I viewed it. What is your opinion on how you envision that type of well, thing? Well, let's, let, let's look at it from a commercial point of view. If, if you can make an over unity device and you sell it for 10000 bucks, but you don't have to pay utility bills, you don't have to pay fuel bills, you don't have to pay anything else for the rest of your life. Was it worth the 10,000 um, bucks? And like you said, as they, the first one may cost you a million bucks, but the, the, uh, the five millionth one may cost you 5,000 bucks because the, you know, the, the price as a function of production goes down. It, that's just how, how, uh, uh, how it works. I mean, the first one's always the most expensive. You know, when, when you're in the, the, the middle numbers in, in those, you know, between five and 50 million of them produced uh, is, is when uh, the, the price goes down and it's the most profitable for the manufacturer and it's, it's a good deal for the consumer. But if you could buy a device like that for 10,000 bucks, it's going to produce all the energy you're ever going to consume in your lifetime. That's a smoking deal. I mean, that, that really is. And you wouldn't be constrained. I mean, um, just think of the things, if, if you had unlimited power at your hands, you know, you, the, the devices you can build. I mean, you, you look at, what does it, I mean, you look at, a, let's look at that MH370 uh, MH again. You know, look at the fuel capacity that they had to have. The thing's burning, you know, 400 gallons an hour or more of, 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 of Carojet fuel. And Carojet is, is more expensive than uh, Super Unleaded, <laughs> and uh, it, it burns a lot of it. It has to be refilled all the time. If, if the airlines could develop uh, an airline based on an over-unity type device, would never have to invest in uh, fuel again, imagine what the cost of air travel is going to go to. It, it's, it's going to plummet. And so we're, we're the, one of the reasons they may be withholding these uh, technologies is they don't they can't control the destruction of the technology of these or of the economy if these technologies are released. So they 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 don't want to destroy. They don't want to put uh, ten thousand oil workers uh, out of out of jobs. They don't want to put uh, people working in refineries out of jobs. What are they going to do next? They don't know. And so they're they're trying to are they trying to avoid uh, you know uh, economic displacement of masses of people? So, you know, the question is, is how do you do the most good for the most people, most cost effectively? That's always the question. And I don't see anybody else asking that question. But in, in my opinion, these things need to be accessed. They, they need to be developed. They need to be commercialized. I mean, well, why do we I have agree. to? But well, why, why do we have to be stuck here on Earth? If we had over unity devices, how come we're not mining the asteroid belt and taking the, the resources we require from there? That would allow us to do truly great works and uh, it, maybe explore uh, this part of the galaxy if we wanted to. You know, there, there's no need to, to limit ourselves just to this one planet. And if this uh, portal technology, as I suspect, is available, you don't need to travel, um, you know, the, the point A to point B in a linear fashion. Go through the portal where you come out how, how do you control what what your uh, your exit point on that is that these are all questions i i can't answer because i don't know but um uh, the, the, these are questions that every inquiring mind should want to know i mean every kid you know i mean i've, I've been dreaming of this stuff since i was fourth in fourth grade trying to to access this stuff how to how to make this accessible to mankind this has been my my, my lifelong quest that i failed miserably at it 
but uh, you know that's uh, that, that, that that's what I that's what I, I have always dreamt of because I have always wanted these things for humanity. Mm-hmm. No, I appreciate the insight because I 100% agree with everything you said. I'm also I'm a business major by by uh, actual education and. Uh, everything you said there makes perfect sense with respect to the cost coming down. And of course, the first one's going to be expensive, but eventually it gets cheaper. And then, you know, people in my, that have been commenting say, well, I pay like, some people are saying they pay 200 to $700 a month for air conditioning, heating, et cetera. And you begin to realize that, yeah, even if something costs over $10,000, like there's still going to be benefit. And that's not even the only benefit. One is a... You're no longer dependent upon the energy systems, conventional energy systems, which most of them are controlled by the government. Uh, so if you're somebody who's like libertarian like me and you can be completely dependent and live off the grid, that's awesome. The other thing is that from the environmental perspective, like we were talking about, you know, this is green energy. This is a situation we don't even need solar planet, plant, uh, panels. We don't need wind power. We don't need anything or any of that cool. So I love that it, there's appeal for both people on either side of the political spectrum. And then there's just appeal from the economic standpoint as well. And then even if only initially the people that are relatively well off can afford it, the price begins to come down and down. And then there's other ways to market it as well, where, you know, one device can power a whole neighborhood and then people can pay into that and reduce their energy costs that way too. So. Well, you, you make a good point. I'll, I'll remind people of this. When I bought my first cell phone, it was a, a Motorola uh, TAC 8300. It cost $3,800 and it was the size of a walkie talkie. It was big and it was expensive and you had to pay by the minute to get it to work. And now you can go out and buy these things for 200 bucks or less. And so it, it went from, you know, almost a $4,000 price point down to a $200 price point. Now, the iPhones are a little different. They, that's you're paying more for brand than you are for functionality. But they're, they're a thousand bucks, but the prices have gone down. The functionality has gone up as a function of time. So, you know, everybody out there, the listening audience has experienced this effect where the first ones out there are always expensive. But, you know, the second generation, the third generation, the fourth generation. And, and these are things we didn't have Six Sigma manufacturing back then. We didn't have ISO 9000 processes back then uh, when these things were, were being invented. And there is there are metrics that you measure. Is it designed for manufacturability? Is it designed for repairability? The, the, these are things that weren't considered back in the day, and, and now they're, they're they're major considerations for any product that's ever built. And so we we've gotten more sophisticated in how we manufacture. And so th- these are all positive things. And uh, like I said, it, it drives the cost down. It drives the value up. Yeah, because technology is by inherently by naturally deflationary. I would recommend everyone, I mean, you know, I mean, I have a Bitcoin podcast, as you can see, it's good, because it's the root, it's the root of the solution. Because uh, uh, when you have a totally criminal, fiat, central banking, financial complex, uh, in, you know, rooted everything within, you know, military industrial complex, everything. I mean, it's so... It's so beyond uh, description. Uh, this is where you begin. You ha- you need sound money. I mean, because you you know you mentioned libertarianism. I mean, we don't have a free market, right? We don't have a free market. We don't have a rational economics. We have Keynesianism, right? And it's uh, at the end of the day, it's about control. It's about you know uh, siphoning off and extracting and 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 stealing systematically from from humanity. And uh, this is where it starts. It starts with the money, with the root of the money. Um, I mean, I know there's a lot of gold bucks out there, but, you know, <laughs> Bitcoin has already superseded every property uh, gold, right? Uh, with a, a store of value, medium exchange, unit of account. And once we have that, because it's the truly decentralized, you know, non-confiscatable, censorship resistant, absolutely scarce and limited money, which no one, no one controls, right? And it's, mm-hmm. yeah, and this is what we need. And, and the, this would eventually... Uh, as I said, you know, Jeff Booth's book uh, is Deflation is the Key to an Abundant Future. This is where it all starts. You know, you create abundance, you create deflation. The prices go down dram- dramatically. The, the quality, the innovation goes up exponentially by orders of magnitude. You have that on every level, right? On energy, well, transportation, on every technological level you can think of. Well, you, you and Ash and both hinted at something, and that is, the direction our society is heading in is we're getting less and less free. Um, you know, as you look at back at 9-11 and the Patriot Act that came out and really, you know, the, the Patriot Act shredded the Constitution and we've been getting less and less free 
since then. You look at your FICO score on your credit, how to measure what a good citizen, what a good bill payer you are or aren't. And you look at devices, uh, like we said, if you had an over unity device, you could pay 10,000 bucks for it, buy it once, it's good for a couple hundred years. You never have to buy it again. That takes you out of the yoke of slavery that, uh, that, that we've been talking about here. And it allows people to be more free than what uh, the powers that be, actually the powers that were want us to be. And so we, what do you do with your, your time if you're truly free, what do you do? Uh, you know, what 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 are your interests? What do you wish to pursue? Uh, because you can do anything now. I mean, there, there there's no uh, there, there's no uh, constraints on you. There, there's no budgetary constraints. So uh, you know that these are questions that everyone's going to have to answer. I mean, it could be the greatest boon to the high achievers in life, but if you're just some schlub, uh, lazy, wants to sit around all day, you can do that too. I mean, it's uh, you, you're you would you would have the the freedom you need. You don't need to go out and uh, and compete, if you will. One of the problems in our financial system, and most people don't realize this, you go to the bank and you want to buy borrow money to buy a car or to buy a house. Okay, they lend you the money. Say, here's the money to buy the house. It's you know five hundred thousand dollars. Here, here's here's your loan. The bank essentially creates that money. And you take it, you, you secured yourself a house, I have a 30 year mortgage with an interest rate. What the bank doesn't create is the interest. So where does the interest come from? Um, you have to go out there and outperform someone else and take extra money from them uh, in order to pay your bills. And so there, there is a deficit in our system. And that's why our system has to inflate constantly uh, to, in order to create more money to pay last year's bills. And so, uh, you know, people don't see the, that flaw in our current financial system, but that is probably the biggest flaw there is, is the fact that they will create the money to buy the house, but they don't create the money to pay the interest on the house. And if you don't pay the interest, you don't keep the house. So the, these are just fundamental concepts here that a, a lot of people have never thought about. Yeah, I appreciate your mindset, Mike. I think that uh, yeah, we see eye to eye on more than I would have anticipated. I really know how what this would how this would be or how it would go, but man, yeah, you, you've definitely got the the same kind of consulting mindset that I've had in terms of analytical thinking about how the world works and uh, you know in reality. And yeah, I think the one big thing you mentioned is this idea that what do we do with ourselves when we have free energy, where AI is doing all the the jobs, and we don't we just can sit around and do whatever we want. I think that might be one of the reasons why the elites of the world that are hiding this technology do that, is that this is a, there's a big socioeconomic shift that will happen when this type of technology gets out there. So uh, I just want to thank you. I appreciate this conversation. It's great. Well, if I was a, el gusto es mío. The pleasure is mine. Thank you. <laughs> I definitely want to get your contact information after this just to maybe okay. bring ideas off of you in the, in the future because uh, it's been awesome and I appreciate uh, Kayvon for putting right. this together here. You know. Yeah, it's been a fascinating conversation. I mean, Ashman, you know, you said you, you want to commercialize, you know, you want to bring it out, you want to educate the people and I've been shouting from the roof, you know, I mean, I, I was the first one was like, hey, go on Joe Rogan, he's got the reach. Now, you know, he always says, I'm curious, I'm open-minded and stuff like that, but I mean, this is where it starts. And I mean, my I'm begging for a more holistic discussion. This is why, you know, I brought you the two of you together. But, but, you know, there might be more, you know, scientists, engineers, whistleblowers, real experts, whatever, plasma scientists. Mm -hmm. I think we need we need this. And this is, by the way, to coming back to my point with Stephen Greer, this is the reason I tried to bring, you know, Mayor and Kesh with uh, Stephen Greer together after a long, com you know, correspondence with his wife and I'm like, you know, he, he always in his presentations or talks, he said, uh, nothing happened until now. You know, he said he, he has a funding or he would get a funding, whatever the number was, $50 million or whatever, and then, you know, set up a team, but nothing happened. So I'm like, okay, maybe I should bring them together with Mehran Kesh. And because he's got the knowledge, he's, he developed it, he tested it, he, you know, brought it out in Iran. So um, yeah, and he wants, you know, he wants peace, he wants evolution, he wants abundance for humanity. And, uh, but yeah, uh, it's, uh, of course, this discussion is, is always nuanced, <laughs> more nuanced than ever. 
Um, but this is, I think, it's overdue. I, I, I think this is this is the, the final comment I want to make. It's overdue, and I think we are on the verge of literally uh, maybe a you know regional war, uh, third world war. I don't know, uh, trying to be you know uh, to be provoked with it. You know, Israel, Ukraine, uh, NATO, Russia. It's it's a lot of shit happening right now, and I think uh, what better time than now? You know, people. With you know, like you, Mike and and Ashton, you know, kudos to you, to your courage and and you know, to your ethos, <laughs> to bring this out to to uh, to the public, to humanity, eventually. So thank you so yeah. much. Again. And two, I think that a lot of people wonder why hasn't this stuff come out if it's out there. And I think that there's a certain level of blessings that need to happen to the people that are bringing it out. Like people have tried in the past and the, and they failed. I think that we'd all probably agree some people have been silenced. Uh, otherwise, there's other ways to silence people as well. They can buy up the, the patents from people. They can buy the rights from it, make sure it never hits the market. Uh, lots of ways that it that happens. And so I think it has to be all the right combination of factors. And it may be only now in 2024 where, you know, the people who do control the gatekeepers of this world behind the scenes uh, are beginning to want it to, to come out and leak out. And maybe it is going to come out in a controlled fashion. Um, I don't know, but I think that we have to keep continually pushing forward to get that information out there. And like Mike said, our biggest asset is that there's millions of us and that right. we can, you know, share the information on what's out there, what we're capable of. And this is how we begin to steal back, rip yeah. that technology from those projects. We go, look, this is possible. And once I, I personally think that once we get our collective conscious to a high enough level where people believe that some of this stuff is possible, then all of a sudden it'll just start spilling out everywhere. That's my perspective. Well, let, let, let's, let's visit something. You just made a comment here about patents. And, you know, what if we disregard patents? Everybody says, oh, I have to patent this because I'm going to make money off of this. What if we disregard that and say, you know what? Um, we're not going to pay attention to what the patents are because humanity needs this technology and they need what what is locked up in this patent, artificially locked up, artificially sequestered away. We, we need to access it. To, to, to save the species and so why are we allowing ourselves to be constrained and imprisoned by this construct called a patent and uh you know it's you know it's it's nice to be recognized for for doing great work but when it constrains when it when it's more of a hobble than it is an enabler because like you said companies can buy up the patents and just kill these things they, they can buy it up to kill it uh how many uh, hydrogen projects out there have the big oil companies bought up just to kill them so they don't want to have to compete with hydrogen as a fuel i mean there's a uh, th this has gone on for a long long time where people who are in control and, and are making the money don't wish to have competing technologies out there so they'll they'll pay a premium price to get uh to, to control the technology only to to, uh, to make it go away to put it in a, to lock it in the drawer and never let it out so we've got to start ignoring this stuff. We've got to start, uh, you know, just saying, hey, wait a minute. This this isn't right. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't benefit the greater good of humanity. And so we have to start doing these things uh, regardless of what the patent says. Yeah. So, and, you know, looking at reality, Mike, Ashman, um, I don't know, there was a glitch. Uh, Ashman, you were gone from the, I didn't see you, whether you heard it or not, but, you know, the suicidal, <laughs> suicide, the suicide missions of, of scientists, engineers in the process of patenting mm -hmm. stuff. And we know, I know a lot of, of course, from Mayor and Kishan in Belgium or, you know, the European Space Agency, it's all intertwined, interconnected. I mean, how many people, how many people have been seriously assassinated or silenced, you know, or, you know, just disappeared or whatever, you know, or dropped dead after, a, you know, a, a couple of spoons of spoo soup. So this is the problem. It's very sobering, you know, looking at this reality, because it's, as you said, Mike, it's been ongoing for a very, very long time, you know, maybe even 70 or 80 years, you know, and it's, it's shameful. It's, it's, it's extremely shameful. And it's, I think it's overdue that uh, we don't need billions of people. We are eight point whatever, five billion people we just as you said ash we just need uh maybe a critical mass of maybe few millions people you know different layers different fields of expertise knowledge and wisdom and 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 practical no, knowledge right it, it, it all goes back to the banking system because people want to patent their work because they want to get paid for their their work their invention and if you took the financial incentives out if our financial system was reorganized in a way that um, it was provided abundance for all, 
you wouldn't have the the, the value of the patents would, would, wouldn't matter anymore. But uh, as long as we're we're stuck in this uh, financial slavery of our financial system, the way it's organized now, we're, we're going to stay here. So we've got to start breaking the rules. We've got to start disobeying them intentionally uh, with, with the purpose of, of getting all of us freed out of this. I mean, it's, uh, I, I don't want to be the radical here among us, but I'm, I'm the radical among us. I mean, it's, uh, it, 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 it's time to break some eggs. You know, it, it's time to make the omelet and uh, move forward because, you know, if, if we keep doing what we've been doing, they're going to keep us where we're, where we're at now. Like I said, why hasn't energy uh, generation kept up with, uh, you know, communications and, and computing technology? Because if it did, we'd have all the things that we're, we're talking about today. And it has not. We're still, you, we still rely on internal combustion as our primary, as our primary source of energy. So, right. time to break the rules, guys. Yep. <laughs> time to action. All right, Mike. Uh, Ashton, thank you so much again. I mean, I would even go even deeper, but I don't want to take too much time because there is a, there is something. Um, the reason I say overdue because we're losing, by the way, five percent of our magnetic field of planet Earth every year, mm -hmm. and we're at seventy percent. So you know what that means? That means in the years I don't know, two thousand thirties, if we're lucky, two thousand forties, we're going to have you know, in the process of pole shift. I don't know whether you're following all this data and factual evidence. We are pretty much screwed as humanity. We need to create a probably uh, technologically, uh, artificially, a magnetic field around the Earth. But, you know, it goes into different because people are ignoring this, these facts, you know, the reality of the truth. And uh, this is where, it's, you know, where, uh, I don't know, people need to wake up. Seriously. Well, <laughs> we will see how much of this can we blame on the, the current solar cycles that are going on and uh, yeah. our, our, our progression through the galactic plane. Uh, with, with, you know, there there's so many variables out there we don't know. And, uh, you know, how do you manufacture a magnetic field around an entire planet? That's uh, that, that's a tall order, but I, I don't know. Yeah, it's just but, a uh, natural Earth disaster cycle as I, you know, mm -hmm. see it. But, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I believe in the power of humanity, just to kind of as a closing statement, I think that I've always believed that when there's a problem that arises, humanity will find a solution for it. And I would have never imagined even a year ago that I would be staring at and disclosing the, the solution for the pollution crisis and energy crisis that's out there. So this makes me think even things like that that are potential seem like disasters that perhaps there already is a solution and the public just doesn't even really know about it. So I look at things from the hopeful perspective. I, I look at this type of advanced technology and I think, well, there's certainly the possibility for the doom of our entire civilization, but there's also the possibility where we can move into Star Trek world like uh, Mike was exactly. talking about. Yeah. Uh, Ashton, where can people find you or follow you? I mean, you know, I always retweet everything I see and watch every interview. I appreciate but you. Yeah, why don't you go ahead and... Yeah, I mean, so you guys can find me at JustXAshton on Twitter, at JustXAshton on YouTube. Uh, I'm only one person managing multiple social media and normal job and everything, so it's it's tough. But if you guys want to follow along with the case, follow along with, uh, you know, ho hopefully trying to change civilization, then come along for the ride. Appreciate you. Great. Mike, where can people find you, or where do you want? You can't, <laughs> unless unless you already know me. I I eliminated my entire social media uh, footprint, everything. I mean, LinkedIn, Facebook, everything. They're all gone. And you're not I, doing I, this I, podcast radios and uh, the short end of the stick anymore. That's that's. No, I, I haven't done that in a while. I'm appearing mm -hmm. on uh, a Global Freedom TV with Scott mm -hmm. Bennett. I, I'm on with him once a week. I still do uh, interviews on Press TV. I've been doing interviews for uh, Russia One out of Moscow. I do a couple other Iranian uh, networks that are local, mostly in Farsi, um, you know, where they go through translators and, and things. But uh, as far as a social media profile, no, the social credit score is getting too much. Uh, when people look at you now, they pull up, uh, they want to look at your Facebook postings, want to look at your Instagram postings. I didn't want any part of that. so I. Uh, I deleted everything and uh, severed that oh, a couple of years ago, and so that I, I, I you know, try to be as uh, digitally stealthy as I can. Although I, I fail miserably at it, but uh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And uh, anyway, uh, I'm really happy to have you connected. Uh, so, Ash and Mike, why don't you just you know connect with them? I think it's going to be a very fruitful cooperation, whatever in whatever on whatever level. Uh, why don't we do that? If we stop recording. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Bye. <laughs> I want to say uh, just a few words. Um, 
sort of um, as a commentary or as an addition to what has been discussed now um, with Mike Harris and Ashton Forbes. I I'm truly grateful that, you know, that's my mission. I, I'm, you know, I accomplished my mission. I wanted to bring them together because that's, I see this, my calling, my, my, uh, my mission, uh, uh, and to connect, um, you know, the right people together. Right. Um, and now Ashton Forbes has done a brilliant job, like dissecting forensically investigating and debunking the wannabe de debunkers. I mean, the, the satellite videos are definitely, you know, authentic. It's, it, you know, it's undeniable. It's, and the cover up, the, uh, I mean, all the inconsistencies, the contradictions, the, the uh, falsification of, of evidence by the, whatever, US government, military industrial complex, uh, the Department of Defense, it's all in the open now. It's so in our faces. Now, what's interesting again is that um, I've I found this uh, post by Ashton, which he did I don't know end of twenty three, beginning of twenty twenty four, and <laughs> sorry my chronic coughing, and where uh, you know where essentially Mike Harris you know just said it um, in you know uh, without without any kind of you know jokingly joking gestures uh, or mimics. Uh, he said, yeah, it, uh, his, his wireless or best guess would be, you know, the, the data points that he had or whatever, or the, the, the evidence that he had to, you know, connect the dots. He said, as he said, um, uh, can only have been an interdimensional portal. Now, I, I know, you know, for people who've never, you know, went into a rabbit hole or occupied themselves or studied or researched, you know, magnetic gravitational fields, plasma science, plasma technology, uh, you know, the, the essence of creation, magnetic fields, unifying field. I did a whole video uh, on this, you know, uh, dedicated to Ashton Forbes and tried to, you know, bring people together. Now, the essential point I wanted to make is that the point is we are in a fucked up, it, it truly, I'm sorry, my language, we're in a truly fucked up time and um, situation right now, right? We're on the verge, uh, precipice of third world war because uh, some entities, some really satanic evil entities, because it all comes together, you know, all these suppressed technologies that's been going on for not only decades, probably for 70, 80 years, but, but definitely for the last, I don't know, four or five decades, systematically. Tens and tens of trillions of dollars siphoned off. Just listen to the talks of Catherine Austin Fitz, who was, you know, in that, in those, in the George Bush administration. <laughs> She's actually the whistleblower, right? So, um, um, yeah, um, there's been a lot of attempts and, 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 you know, the problem is there's a lot of, you know, brilliant, super intelligent people like scientists, engineers, inventors within corporations, outside or whatever, inventors, engineers, scientists, but then, you know, they seek or they desire to patent. And then in the patent process, uh, it all gets fucked up because they all get screwed up. Either they're going to, you know, be bought off, silenced, intimidated, threatened, the, you know, the, the inventors, engineers or whatever, the people, you know, who could do this, make this happen and the families, or they get suicided or they drop dead after, you know, eating, a, uh, you know, some soup bec because in due pro you know, in that process of trying to patent it. And if they, if they don't want, you know, to, uh, hand it over the technology or whatever, or not uh, to their terms and conditions or whatever, you know? So they just, eventually that's the last um, fig leaf, right? They, they they just kill them, right? They assassinate them or make it look like a suicide or a natural, uh, a natural cause of death, right? And that's happened over and over and over again, right? We're probably at least talking about like hundreds and hundreds of, uh, hundreds, at least, uh, you know, uh, um, hundreds of, of scientists, engineers, inventors, and what have you. So it all comes together. I mean, this whole thing that you might have been hearing, you know, about blackmail, right? All these, you know, evil, you know, disgust. I mean, just, just beyond horrific um, pedophilia, blackmail operations. I mean, Epstein is just the tip of the iceberg. I mean, we're talking about... A, you know, a whole military intel, uh, multi-intelligence, um, uh, you know, uh, super criminal, um, 
organizations and internationally, you know, whether it's in Belgium, United States, I mean, in the United States alone, I mean, there are like 800,000 to a hundred, uh, to a million kids missing every year. Now, what does it have to do with, with that topic? Right. But it has, because uh, this is how they, um, you know, uh, essentially then, you know, um, blackmail uh, the, the, the puppets, right. Uh, definitely the puppets or the Royal family or whatever, or political decision makers, the presidents of um, all kinds of decision makers, right. Or within corporations, right. So what we need, we need just a critical mass <laughs> as Ashton Forbes also mentioned or touched upon. We just need, we might just really need just a few million people, of what? Of 8 billion, 8.5 billion people worldwide, right? To make this happen on, on every level, on every intelligence level, wisdom level, technical skill level, um, engineers, scientists, inventors, plasma scientists, nuclear engineers, even. Yeah. I mean, we, we were talking, right, about Marin Tabakulikesh, whom I had been, you know, I mean, I was in the midst of this, you know, uh, following it, the, the, you know, studying and reading and, and you know, doing all this uh video you know seminars workshops um <laughs> i mean it was it was a wild ride for me i mean it was a for a long for many years right at least i don't know six or seven years you know so i understand i have the comprehension of the essence you know of, of uh, to make to, to make especially to make this understandable to to make you know to break this down like what is it right? it's a magnetic field you know there's a lot of terminology i think we have to redefine not only redefine but simplify you have to explain it in a way so that a seven-year-old child can understand yeah you know, and not come up with all kind of terminology mathematical bullshit and blah 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 no <laughs> and uh yeah, and when, when you're talking about the unifying field, magnetic field, then you, you know, then you talk about gravity, the structure of the light, and and then you can talk about you know all these fancy, sophisticated terminology to come up with whatever wormholes and dark matter and antimatter and blah blah and bosons and blah. It's all it's a lot of crap, a lot of bullshit in my opinion. But you have to simply you have to make it understand because it's all about fields. It's all about magnetical gravitational field strength, right? And when it turns to light, it's just uh, it just changes the shape and form, but it's the same. It's the same sort of layers, right? Of of feel of different field strengths, right? Would it be matter field strength, uh, transition field strength, or principal field strength? It just you know, uh, so so it can travel beyond the speed of light through space, through whatever, through cosmos, through universes. Then it changes, you know, like a like a cylindrical, you know, uh, arrow, right? But then when it's um, Interact so when it's found its position, then it turns you know back into a uh, let's say spherical plasma, right? So anyway, without going from one rabbit hole to another, um, I think what we need uh, we definitely need education. We need to spread the knowledge to make break this down, simplify the whole process, the whole comprehension, the whole knowledge. Um, and we need people. We need people who who have the knowledge, who have the wisdom, who have the skills, who have the talent, who have the you know the practical uh, you know know how how to you know develop, test, you know design, and um, uh, at least you know on a just speak on a, on a physical level, right? To put this together, you know, and um, yeah, and 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 uh, we're talking about uh, on every you know uh, level of uh, technology, right? Would it be energy healing? transportation pro new so-called you know what they call about new propulsion yeah we, we haven't had like new propulsion systems for at least 100 years i mean this is ridiculous we're still burning fucking fuel right i mean essentially yeah might be more efficient blah 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 but i mean how many technologies have been suppressed you know as mike harris said hydrogen right the, the stan miller's or what's his name um who you know who also died under various mysterious circumstances the guy with the hydrogen engine i mean it's not the only one he says so many we could have like a super abundant, what, what, I mean, you know, what are we talking about? Like some people are saying like, oh, you know, maybe they think humanity cannot handle this and that all this bullshit, all this, you know, gaslighting. Of course, we, what do you mean we can't handle this? Or or it has to be like, you know, like tr triple, trickle, trickle, trickle. No, no. I mean, we should have, have like, like a super abundant civilization, like at least, I don't know, decades, 100 years ago, right? Maybe even beginning with Tesla. Who, who, who knows, right? But we're talking about like, yeah, then we we don't even have to work like for 
living survival whatever you just do what your mission is what your what your talent is what what you re, what your passion is right maybe you might even work, you know just out of passion you just work for i don't know 10 15 20 hours per week whatever or like full time 100 hours per but you don't have to work anymore yeah because the technology is supposed to serve us serve humanity serve the human soul human spirit human human physicality on every level right of course yeah we're gonna have free energy we're gonna have we, we you can live anywhere i mean literally you can live anywhere and just be here within i mean within a glimpse yeah you just right healing no more disease yeah you yeah no you would be you would you surprise would you be surprised if you got like i don't know hundreds hundreds of years old you think that's 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 so nuts that's so crazy it's because we we never understood, we never questioned the fucking narrative. We, we never questioned the dogma. We never questioned the indoctrinated knowledge. This is why I wanted, you know, this is the first step. I wanted to bring Mike Harris and Ashton Forbes together because Ashton Forbes, that's what we wanted. I, because I read his comments, you know, like, I don't know, a long time ago. They said, yeah, you know, I need to make this happen. But I guess, you know, he didn't have the contact. Or, but I know Mike Harris is a good friend of mine, right? So this is the first step. And of course, yeah, I was the first, you know, I was, uh, I was the one, you know, who shouted from rooftop. Let's have a holistic discussion. Let's bring all these people together. You, you know what, Joe Rogan, you know what? I'm sorry. I mean, I love you, but go, go fuck yourself. I mean, you, you always talk about, oh, you know, I'm open-minded, curious. I don't know. Maybe you're scared. Maybe you're being threatened. Maybe you've got, you know, independent, independent financial dependencies, whatever. You know I mean? You, you've signed like uh, deals with whatever, you know, uh, sponsors, Spotify, whatever, hundreds of millions of dollars. Maybe you don't want to lose that. I don't know. Maybe you're scared because you have children too. I don't know. I, I really, I don't know. But the, but the guests you bring on, I mean, sometimes it's like superficial, super, I mean, I mean, fucked up, really superficial. Or like, it's like, yeah, really good guests. But I'm like, oh man, you almost scratched the curve, right? Why didn't you bring all these people together? I mean, you got to reach, you got, I mean, tens of millions, I don't know, maybe hundreds of millions of people watching you, listening to you, Joe Rogan. So come on, make it fucking happen. I mean, Ash Forbes like begging you, you know, to come on your show because yeah, he said, you know, give me a chance to, to, to lay it out all to, you know, crush them all, all these wannabe debunkers and show you, first of all, the satellite videos are real, authentic, the technology is real. And now it's all backed up by data, evidence, factual evidence, forensic, whatever, right? Proof, God damn it. Teleportation? Yeah, so what? Yeah, you, you don't need, I mean, they just, you know, you just travel. I don't believe in time travel, you know, all this about the travel. No, but you, you can, right? I mean, when people talk about like, oh, so many, whatever, light years away. No, you just, you just, you know, you just tune into the magnetic gravitational field of that, of that destination, of that planet, so whatever, right? And this is how you, yeah, this is how you uh, make a shortcut through that so-called wormhole because you bend time and space and whatever. It doesn't matter, you know, but, but the comprehension process is very important. You need to explain this in a, you know, in a break this down to a seven-year-old child, whatever, a teenager, whatever, you know, is truly able to understand this process. Put this, all this together and question everything. We need to question everything, as Mike Harris said. We need a fucking fundamental new transformation of comprehending, comprehending, understanding, absorbing, question everything from fucking kindergarten to school to university. I mean, what, what the fuck have they taught us? I know that because I had like super grades, right? I, but I never questioned, I was like, what the, what is a fucking electron? I never asked that. So come on, let's, let's make this happen. And you know, remember in the end I said, you know, but I think it would even beyond, which is okay, you know, not, not, not everybody has the time, you know, I mean, what do you need? I mean, you just need to follow the science and the data. Just, just, just follow Ben Davies. I mean, he's brilliant, this guy. I'm a suspicious observer on YouTube, as I said, you know, or Sun with a man on, on, on X Twitter. I mean, this is provable. I mean, this is, I mean, this is factual. We're losing fucking magnetic field per year, right? 5% per year. We are at 70%. It, it all needs, it's a tipping point and it goes exponentially. And then we are fucking vulnerable. Solar flares, coronal mass ejections, micronova eventually, maybe, I don't know, we feel lucky, 2050, I don't know. But it could happen much, much, much faster. And by then, you know, we, you know, I'm not going to worry about fucking Bitcoin because you need, bit oh, yeah, of course, Bitcoin is the ultimate soundest, you know, absolute scarcest money, you know, and everything. It has every monetary property humanity could ever dream of. 
right? And we could have a deflationary, abundant, you know, beautiful life in civilization and structures and get rid of all these fucking satanic evil people, these, these parasites. Starting, you know, with, with, with inflation or, or whatever, or, or, or taxation. We're going to have like an evolu evolution for the first time, you know, after a very, 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 very long time. So anyway, my name is Kevin Davani. I'm the host of the Davani Connection Show. And Joe Rogan, whatever, whoever, Chuck Carlson, get these people on your show. Bring them together. If you're really serious about change, about transformation, about helping humanity, about educating, then fucking do it. This is what we need, right? We need new technologies. We need, they already exist. They fucking already exist. They have been existing, right? For decades now. And now they got even more advanced. It's like a fucking breakaway civilization that they've created themselves. Of course, they've siphoned all these tens and tens. Oh, I don't know how many. I mean, this is a very small, you know, a circle of, 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 you know, parasitic, you know, entities. They, they don't create. They're not intelligent. Nothing. They just, they just know, you know, how to threaten, intimidate, uh, coerce, you know, assassinate, kill, whatever. Okay? And and uh, you know, enslave and and exploit and whatever. Right? I mean, these are parasites. I mean, it's beyond imagination, beyond beyond uh, comprehension of, of, of the average person. Anyway, my name is Kevin Davani. Please get back to me. Follow me on Twitter, X, whatever, LinkedIn, uh, Telegram, um, Nostra, right? The decentralized uh, Twitter and X. Um, yeah, contact me. Give me some suggestions. If you have anybody, you know, whom we can contact together, whom you think, you know, this is this is it, then please, um, uh, let's make this happen together together all right we need to join our forces now our intellect our uh, our true intelligence or the core of our intelligence of our ethos of our soul of our magnetic fields all right so thank you so much again for uh you know for everything for supporting me uh or for you know uh, share this video share share this interview definitely this is what if not the the most important, most fascinating, but this was one of the mo really, truly most fascinating, most important interviews and, and discussions and, and, you know, and talks I've ever done with Mike Harris and Ashton Forbes. So thank you again to both of them and to all our followers, subscribers, listeners, viewers. I'll see you soon. Bye.